Hello and welcome to part 4A of uh, General Organic Chemistry and as promised we're going to start with the resonance effect in this case and I'm calling this video 4A because there are going to be several such videos because the resonance effect not only is a very important effect you know, in the case of organic chemistry uh, to explain the behavior of molecules and mechanisms but it's also something which will take a lot of time for us to understand uh, how it works and how we're going to use this. So this is going to be a series of videos on resonance effect and this is um, the first one of uh, the videos. Now resonance effect as we all know is the delocalization of pi electrons. That means we're going to say that pi electrons do not stick around one place they they are delocalized, they are not localized in one place and, as, and, and this is only because of the wave nature of electrons. Electrons have a dual nature, both particle and wave. The particle nature gives rise to inductive effect, the wave nature gives rise to the resonance effect. And as we know that wave nature cannot be drawn for an electron, we can't draw, we can only draw particle nature. So we represent canonical forms which exhibit particle nature and whose hybrid the actual structure can be assumed to be. Now to make you understand this, uh, let me take an example. You have a molecule A and A is bonded to B. This is a double bond. A is bonded to another B. This is a single bond and there's a negative charge on this B. Now uh, once I write this, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to write another possibility of this. I'm going to make this bond a single and put the negative here and I'm going to make this bond as double and put the B here. Now you might wonder what is the difference between these two. I mean they look the same and perhaps I've just turned it around. Well I have not turned it around. What I have done is I have not changed the position of atoms. The position of atoms remains the same. So these atoms are right where they were in the first structure. What I've done instead is move electrons. The electrons here have come here. The charge here has gone here. So the electrons have moved, the atoms have not. And if that is the case you'm sure you can understand that this particular B has a different environment in this molecule than this B. Here it has bonded with a positive double bond, here it is bonded with a single bond. There is no charge, there's a negative charge. So the environment of each B in this particular case is different. Therefore these two structures are different. They are distinct. They are not same. They are of course similar but not same. Now what we are going to say is that we are saying that the actual molecule is neither this nor this. The actual molecule is a hybrid. It has characteristics of both this and this, some characteristics of this and some of this. But the actual molecule is only one and that molecule has some contributions of both these structures. Since that is a little difficult to draw because it's a wave nature because this is where the wave nature comes up. The electrons are not just here, they are here as well and both these structures contribute. Now in this particular case we might be able to barely able to draw something, something very similar to the hybrid because there are only two structures and they are similar so it could be something like this. Can you see the sigma bonds are solid lines and the pi electrons, can you see they are delocalized? and this is going to have a negative charge delta minus, this is going to have a delta minus negative charge because the charge is not localized in one place they are localized on two atoms, in this case minus is here, in this case minus is here and they are equally likely to be on both the atoms and they are actually in both the atoms. Now, please understand we are showing you the wave nature of electrons, right? The actual structure is a hybrid it's a mix. It is something like this. This is the actual structure. Now actual structure is neither this nor this. It's a hybrid. It's only one structure. Since there the electron is a wave, it's not fixed at one place, it is delocalized. Therefore we are drawing the parent structures and claiming that the actual one is a hybrid. So these are not the structures. The structures is actually the hybrid. So let's sort of uh, understand now as to how we will be able to draw uh, or understand the hybrid and how is the hybrid related to the parent atoms. The actual structure of the molecule or ion is the weighted mean of the canonical or parent structures but the energy of the molecule is lower than the, all the canonical forms. Now what are these canonical forms? These structures remember I drew these are canonical forms. This is a canonical form. Canonical form means these are particle structures, parent structures 
whose hybrid the actual molecule will be. Now, this is a minus, this is a minus. Now, if we were to understand, if somebody were to ask us, what is this bond in, in this molecule? Is it a double bond or a single bond? So, I'm going to say, look, it's neither double nor single. It has a contribution of both. And you can, in this case, you can see that both are having equal contribution because they are very similar molecules. They are very similar in energy. They have, in fact, they have the same energy. The molecules are similar. So, the contribution is going to be equal. So, the contribution is going to be 50% half fraction. Now this bond has half 50% contribution of a double bond. This one. And here 50% contribution of a single bond. Works out to be 3 by 2. This bond 50% single and 50% double. Works out to be 3 by 2 once again. That means, in the actual molecule, both bonds of A and B are same. Same. 1.5, 1.5. That means it is as if I'm saying there are three bonds and I'm going to equally distribute it here. It's 1.5. Of course, the equal distribution comes up only because both atoms are B. If this were a C atom, if the molecule were this and this is the other parent, then these are going to have different energies. They will not contribute equally, so it won't be 50-50. Here it's going to be 50-50. Somebody is going to ask us, what is the charge on B? I'm going to say, all right, 50% minus 1 in this structure and 50% uh, 0 here. That makes it negative 0.5. And the same is true for here, negative 0.5. So in the actual molecule, both B carries 0.5. Now the point is, since the actual molecule is behaving this way, we needed to come out with something that would explain this. That's why we talked about this resonance effect. The resonance effect is basically a theory. Nobody knows, nobody has seen it happen. This is just an explanation. This is just like creating some theoretical uh, um, rule to make us explain why this happens. and. Now, why this happens? Obviously, to gain stability. Now, please understand this. The actual structure is the weighted mean of the canonical forms. But the energy is lower. It's lower than the canonical forms. So, the energy cannot be calculated like this. 50% this and 50% this. The energy is lower than either of them. That is the very purpose of resonance. That is why resonance happens in order to create additional stability in a molecule and this additional stability is being created because of the wave nature of um, electrons. Now what we're going to do is we're going to see how is it that we're going to draw the resonating structures. What are the basic rules? And for that matter one might even wonder what is the difference between isomer and a resonating structure? Both seem like both of the same formula well, there's a lot of difference between the two. An isomer is a real molecule. It actually exists. Whereas a resonating structure, resonance structure, a canonical form is imaginary. The actual molecule is not any one of those structures. It is the hybrid. So all the resonating structures are imaginary structures. They don't exist in reality. And while drawing the structures of canonical forms, positions of atoms are to remain fixed while that of electron changes. And I had said already, positions cannot change. Only the electrons can change. Electrons can shift from one place to the other. Now, the molecules showing resonance uh, must be conjugated and the orbitals are properly oriented. Now, the orbitals that we are talking about are the orbitals which are filled and which are empty or orbitals in which there are single electrons kept and these orbitals have to be properly oriented and we all know that it is the the resonance effect is primarily the pi electron. Uh, this is um, the result of the wave nature and that is pi electrons. Pi electrons are involved here and these pi electrons are always formed during with p bonds, p orbitals and d orbitals. So when I say properly oriented, I mean to say that, okay, let's look at this. These two form a pi bond. 
this is a vacant or maybe maybe this is one electron itself then the resonance effect could be that bond could either form between these two or between these two now for the bond to form between these two this orbital should be parallel compared to this if this is perpendicular it's not going to work now resonance effect is also called the mesomeric effect that's another name given to the resonance effect and resonance effect is a permanent effect that means it is there in the molecule right since its inception it's a very strong effect it doesn't depend on the distance and it is much greater than the inductive effect and resonance is a relative effect it's a need based effect now what this basically means is that suppose if we have a situation where there is an atom having a negative charge and there's an atom having a lone pair now no resonance is going to happen the resonance is not going to happen because the electron density is same in either of the two cases therefore it's a need based effect it's only when somebody wants it if suppose I have a situation like this then the resonance effect will take place because there is electron deficiency here electron richness here so when there is a need it will happen it will not happen for the sake of happening unlike inductive effect which we already said happens in every situation and we we don't even bother about knowing what atom or group of atoms attached to a particular atom we just know if this atom is plus i it will show plus i no matter with what it is attached whereas here it's a need based effect number one number two here you cannot classify resonance as a plus r or a minus r it depends on a situation for example the phenyl group can act as both minus r and plus r if it is attached to a electron rich system it will take the electron minus r if it is attached to a electron deficient atom it's going to give electrons it can do both so resonance effect is a relative effect it's an effect in which electrons can be given can be taken in some cases only can be given in some cases only can be taken and in some cases can be done either way so it's a relative effect depends upon what it is attached with whether that is electron rich or deficient and occurs only when the need arises so that's the end of uh, the first part of the resonance structure video 4a and we're going to continue with resonance effect in the next video as well thanks for watching